praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God our full attention. Our full attention. Amen. Prepare for praise him and worshiping him, glorifying him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Let us sing for joy unto the Lord. Let us shout aloud 
to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Let's go to our Lord in worship and prayer. Father God, we just thank you, Father God. Lord, we come with, with gladness in our hearts, with joy in our hearts. We want to bow down to worship you, Father, because we know, Father, that you are a living God, that you are the true God, Father God. And the truth is that we cannot do anything without you, Father God. Lord, so we want to worship you in this service today. We want to worship you through the preach word, every prayer that's prayed. We want to worship you through the instruments, through the song, Father God. Lord, you said that everything that has breath, let him praise the Lord, Father God, with our whole bodies, with our open hearts, Father God, open hearts, Father God, ready to receive you, Father God. But Lord, we want to turn around and bless you as well, Father God. Let our praise and everything thing that we do in this service worship you father so we invite you in father god lord we ask that you would use pastor today to deliver your message father god so that it can be a convicting word father god and a blessing word a word of comfort strength and guidance father god oh lord we just couldn't thank you enough for everything that you do father so it's in this father god that we just open up this service to worship you almighty god in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you and amen. Hallelujah. 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 You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You deserve it. Are you glad this morning? I know you may not feel like it. Maybe you got copper tunnel or something. But pat your foot, clap your hand, let God know that you are glad. Amen? Be Press through, press through. Don't take away God's praise and worship. Let him know you're glad this morning. God bless you. morning. Can we have all guests and visitors please stand? Any guests and visitors who God led you to? Good morning. Good morning. I want to say welcome to you again. Uh, my name is uh, Tilden Wright and I have the opportunity to serve as a deacon here at Green Forest and I would just like to say again good morning on behalf of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first and foremost and on behalf of our senior pastor Reverend Dennis Mitchell. Right now, you all are attending our 1045 service. Uh, we also have a 745 service. Uh, and in between here at the forest, we call it fulfillment hour. You may be more familiar with the term Sunday school, but it's the same thing as where we continue to learn more about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Uh, we have several activities going on here at Green Forest uh, throughout the week. And let me also say, also during today, uh, if you have young people in your family, we also have a children's ministry and we also have a youth ministry activity. And we would encourage you that if you bring them with you, we would encourage you to bring them out so that they may learn about the Lord in their own way. Uh, we have several other activities uh, as the usher has passed out some bulletins you'll see what we have going on throughout the week uh, we try to have activities to accommodate uh, where people's needs are the bottom line is we want to try to meet people where they are and we hope that your schedule will allow you to be able to come out and join us uh, we have a simple expression here at green forest in that when you visit with us this may be your first visit but when you visit with us again and hopefully you keep on visiting us eventually we're going to ask you to what green forest join us all right thank you you may be seated Good morning. I'm just excited to be here, happy to be here. And I'm telling you, there's a reason sometimes that you're just happy to be in God's presence. Some of you need to come with me during the week when we go to some of the hospitals and nursing home and, and talk with people that lost loved ones. And, and you know that to be able to come into this house on this Sunday to worship the Lord is truly a blessing, amen? It's a blessing. You're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. And sometimes we just don't realize how blessed we are. Amen. Amen. Do we have any birthdays? 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 All right. Okay. All right. Happy birthday. All right. All right. All right. Okay. How about anniversaries? Anniversaries? Uh, where are you? All right, all right, okay, right there too. Now next year, this time, I want y'all to make sure you send me a note, okay? <laughs> all right, but, but we always, you know, we start now, get into that time of the month when it's what's called Valentine, uh, you know, and, and the, the, the Lover's Month, you know, so I know that we're supposed to have a lot of marriage in, September, in February, amen, amen. But we're going to come out and, and greet each other, and we're going to do so with some love, some honey, some uh, some handshakes, some holy hugs, some kisses. But if you don't know someone, you know, just ask them who they are, okay? A change phone number and pray for each other during the week, okay? So let's greet one another.
morning. My name is Amanda McPherson, and I am a member of the college ministry. We continue our black history celebration, focusing on the theme, civil rights in America, standing on the shoulders of giants. 2014 marks the 50th anniversary of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, signed into law by President Lyndon Johnson. I call your attention to the PowerPoint slide. Next Sunday, February 16th, we will hear from our youth and children winners of our oratorical contest as they share their interpretations of our theme and commitment to make a difference. On the fourth Sunday, February 23rd, everyone is asked to wear their cultural attire and join us for a brief connection reception immediately following the second service. Please sign a continue the legacy commitment to take an active role in becoming the giants for future generations. Submit a picture and a brief description of your commitment to the past civil rights struggle. Please stop by the black history table on the back porch to register to vote, join a civil rights organization, or volunteer to be a mentor for members of the Green Forest family. We now pause to pay a brief tribute to a giant of a world leader whose lifelong commitment to civil rights fueled the struggle to end apartheid and has impacted not only the nation of South Africa, but the entire world. His 1995-year journey took him from violence, oppression, second-class citizenship, and a 27-year imprisonment to become the first black president of South Africa. Thank you. Mandela. Mr. Nelson Mandela, 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 a free man, free man, man taking, taking his first steps into a new South Africa. That is the man who the world has been waiting to see. His first public appearance in nearly three decades. The idea of a democratic and free society in which I hope to live for, if needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. Nelson Mandela becomes I, the president of a united, non-racial South Africa. Nelson Mandela, you hereby serve to be faithful to the Republic of South Africa. Never and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another. I stand before you filled with deep pride and joy, and joy that we can loudly proclaim from the rooftops, free at last. People may say to spend 37 years of your life, you have wasted your life. But uh, the greatest thing for a politician is whether the ideas to which you have committed your life, your life are still alive. And uh, as I have said, it's futile to be thinking about what happened in the past. We are thinking about what is happening now and what should happen uh, tomorrow. Don't call me. I'll call you. God is so good. There are many, 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 many reasons that we praise God. But it's too much for us to count. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Because of who you are, I 
give you glory Because of who you are I give you praise Because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord, I worship you Because of who you are Ooh, I worship you Because of who you are That's just what I do, Lord, because, because of who you are. Just give him praise. Give, you give him praise. praise. Oh, because of who you are, I will lift my voice and sing, Lord. morning as we prepare for our altar prayer we want to think about those who are in the hospital and I got word this morning that our dear sister Joy Coffee that she had been readmitted so we want to keep sister Joy lifted up uh, our sister Jocelyn uh, Griffin we want to keep her lifted up sister Ethel Lane sister Willie K Adam that's in the long-term care Brother James Edwards, the father Linda Edwards, we want to, and Gail Moffat, we want to keep that father lifted up. Modina Polk, who is the mother of Sister Holder, we want to continue to pray for her, but not only that, for Rub Holder as she goes back and forth to cure for her mother. Amen. Amen. And Sister Messia Gallo, uh, the mother of Sherry and Greg Crawford, and the Burgess twins, we want to keep those babies lifted up. 
Amen. Amen. Then if you look at the list, all those families that we have bereavement. The family of Sister Gina Williams, she lost her brother. The family of Sister Lucy Goo, she lost her son, Stephen Goo, that was funeralized here yesterday. The family of Sister Vivian Moore, whose brother Jimmy Vernon Addy was funeralized on February the 2nd. The family of Brenda J. Morrow, whose aunt passed away. The family of Sister Janie Bowen, whose aunt Wendell Henderson was funeralized. And finally, the family of Sister Joanne Johnson, whose mother, Sister Peyton Little, was recently. So it's just so much death, so much sickness going around. And we just got to pray for each other. Support one another. Be there for one another. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day that you have blessed with this new mercy, this new day that, that we had not yet fully realized. We thank you, Father, for it. And Father, we're not going to worry too much about yesterday. But Father, we're going to live in the moment. And Father, what we want to do is touch each other in this moment to reach out and be compassionate, to reach out to be caring, reach out, oh Father, just to love one another. And then, Father, we just want to take a little moment to thank you for your love, your kindness, your mercy, your grace. And Father, when we think about all these goodness that you have blessed us with, Father, we think about your Son, Jesus Christ, that came into this old world just for us that died up on that old rugged cross for our sins, that we may have the right to life and to salvation. So, Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for Jesus. And then, Father, we want to pray for our church. But not only this church, Father, we want to pray for every church that has this door open today, that's carrying out your will, that's preaching the word, that's caring for the people, that's spreading the goodness of Christ. Father, we want to pray for all the church. But Father, this morning we also want to lift up our pastor. Father, we pray that thou would just anoint him with wisdom. Father, that he can lead this congregation in the things that we need to do and in the, in the way that we need to do it. But Father, we ask that you would give him an anointed word this morning as he preached to the people that we may realize that there is hope. That we realize, oh Father, that there is peace that, that in the name of Jesus is everything that we need is in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, we thank you for this choir. We thank you for our musician. We thank you for our usher. Father, we thank you for everyone that's serving this morning. Father, we don't take it for granted. For, Father, our greatest ambition is simply to be your minister, to be your servant, to do things according to your will. Father, we just thank you. So now, Father, as we look at this world, Father, we, we pray that even in the winter games that's going on right now, Father, that there would be no terror terrorist acts. Father, that there will be peace, that the nation can come together and play together, oh Father, and that even in the midst of all that, that you can be glorified. So we ask, Father, that you will bless this nation. Father, we pray for our president. Father, we pray for our Congress. We pray for our leaders, oh Father, that there may be a sense of unity, a sense of, Father, of cooperation, that, that we can put together, put aside our differences, oh Father, that we do that which is good for the people. So we pray, Father, for the leadership of this nation. And then, Father, when I look at the news, Father, I got a telegram, excuse me, an email from one of my friends that was in Sudan. She's a missionary. And I was worried about her, but I got the email that said that she was out safely, that she was safe, but she was so worried about the people that were still there. So, Father, we pray for what's going on in Sudan, oh, Father, that there may be peace in that land. Father, we just ask that you would just bless us. Make us concerned. And, Father, help us to live out your will for us. Help us to live out our calling. Help us to do the things that you would have us to do. And then, Father, we can be so careful to give you the praise, to give you the glory, to do all the things, oh, Father, that you would have us to do, not for our self-glory, but for your glory. And then at the end of the day, oh, Father, we can say that we have fought a good fight, that we have fought the good fight, that we lifted up the banner of Jesus Christ. Father, that's what we're called to do, to lift up the banner of Jesus so we ask, Father, now, let us carry it with pride. Let us carry it with glory, that Jesus is glorified. And it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
to God for he is awesome I don't care what's going on in my body I'm going to give God everything that I got for he is great we don't need to sit down on our praise we don't need to sit down on acknowledging how awesome God is we're here because God is great
He's an awesome God. He's a wonderful God. He's an everlasting God. He's a forgiving God. He's an on-time God. I can't help myself. I have to praise him with, with everything I got. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus. Hey! My God, who's sovereign. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 He's awesome. He's mighty. He's great. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Woo! blood of the lamb and by the power of our testimonies. Amen. Amen. So let's share that with somebody each, each and one another today. Amen. I'm sorry I had to jump up there. The Holy Spirit said tell them this is praise time here. Especially when a minister gets overcome like that. You just jump on up and down and thank you for what he's done for you and you don't have to wait till then. We just thank God for this morning, this week. Amen. And passed us back to go on with the rest of the service. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We can let the people in, let the people in. Good morning, Green Forest. I'm here to talk just through the announcements a little bit, and that's tough to do that after that, so please forgive me for slowing us down a little bit. We just ask you to make sure you do read your announcements that are printed in your bulletin, and I'm just going to emphasize a few things. On Wednesday, February 19th, we will have a called church life session, and that's just right after the Bible study and we are going to be ratifying the leaders. That's something we have to do procedurally according to our bylaws so that we may install the leaders that following Sunday, February 23rd. Also, beginning this Wednesday, if you remember, because of the Snowmageddon or whatever it was called, 
we had to delay the start of the Bible study track series, and we will begin that this Wednesday. We have two classes that are we are emphasizing today. In addition to what we normally have on the track, we have the Financial Peace by Dave Ramsey, as well as Pastor Mitchell will be conducting a one-month study that kind of extends the teaching from Colossians. He'll be using the book, I Am a Church Member, Discovering the Attitude That Makes the Difference. And so we invite you to come out this Wednesday. I'm also up here to make our final appeal for the Valentine's Day Sweetheart Ball and Pastor's Appreciation Sunday, all happening beginning Friday. The Sweetheart Ball actually kicks off the Pastor's Appreciation and the tickets is a deal. It's a sweetheart ball deal. $40 for regular tickets and $35 for those seniors who are 70 years old or older. And the handout in your bulletin kind of gives you an idea of what's included with your ticket. You get a choice of prime rib chicken or grilled salmon, desserts, live band, a jazz vocalist, a serenade to our pastor and first lady, and we will be celebrating, of course, the culmination of six years as pastor and going into our seventh year as pastor. And of course, what would a ball be without dancing? We also will have a photographer on board to help you to get a memento of the evening. For those ladies who will be attending the ball without an escort, we will have several tables that will be endowed dolls and divas so that we can sit together and enjoy the evening. We are encouraging you to please purchase your tickets today outside or anytime online today or tomorrow. And if you do that online, we will mail your tickets to you. If you buy tickets on Tuesday and Wednesday, those tickets will be available at the ball. Of course, we will be selling tickets in the church office all week if you're thinking about buying this, a ticket at the church. We're trying to sell 60 more tickets, and once we do that, we'll be right where we need to be. So we do want you not to delay, but get your ticket as soon as possible. Then, on next Sunday, right here in this sanctuary, we're going to show some love for our pastor and first lady. We will have, we've invited the former pa pastor of the East End Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Mark Croston. He's a powerful preacher. And we are so delighted that he's here and coming here. He was just ending 26 years with that church, and now he's accepted a position with Lifeway Resources as the National Director of Black Church Partnerships. So I'm assuming we will probably will see him more, but we want to welcome and give him a hearty welcome here. Our Brotherhood Choir will be ministering to us during both services, but our Children's Chapel Choir will join us during the 1045 a.m. service. Immediately following the second service, we will have a handshakes and hugs appreciation reception in the Fellowship Hall, and this will be an opportunity for us to give handshakes and hugs to the first family and to our pastor, and we'll enjoy cake, cookies, and punch to close out the weekend of love. And so I encourage you to please join us for a weekend of love this last service, I did not end it this way, and I, I was chastised. So please read your bulletin and what is it? govern yourselves accordingly. <laughs> Thank you. As we prepare for offering, just want to note that uh, as we're preparing uh, for the Easter season for Lent, is yesterday we had the first uh, training session for one great day of evangelism. We had eight churches present and 65 people that showed up for that training session. Amen. And I urge uh, the members here to, uh, you know, read your bulletin and come out. And that's the day that we can give a lot of praise and service to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And yesterday, I forgot to announce that we had our open house for the academy, and it was well attended, you know, and uh, spread the word that we have a hidden jewel here right on campus with us. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. Father, we thank you for the gift that we have to give back for, Father, that means that you have blessed us. And Father, it's not that we've been so good or so, uh, so gifted or so talented, oh Father, that we have to give. It's because you have simply blessed us beyond measure. 
So, Father, we just want to give back a small portion of which you have blessed us with. And then, Father, we pray that it will be used for that building your kingdom. And even, Father, that we send out missionaries and, and they go to four corners of the world, Father, to carry out your gospel, to carry out the commandment, oh, Father, that we will be able to have your word preached everywhere, on every continent, to every tribe, to every people. So, Father, we thank you for enabling us to carry out your commandment. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Why don't you stand with us and proclaim that on Christ the solid rock we will stand. All other ground is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. My hope is built. God singing on Christ. God bless you, and you may be you may be seated. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for listening when we pray. You said in your word, call on you, and that you would answer us. One day, oh God, Jehoshaphat brought the people of God together. They didn't know what to do. And they prayed, and because you were listening, you instructed them in what to do. When Nehemiah was sent back to attend to the walls of the temple that in the city that had been destroyed, before he did anything, he sought your face. You heard him, and you gave him favor with the king. And hence, he had everything he needed to lead the people. When Daniel was told by the king to interpret his dream, at least he faced death. Daniel went home and he prayed, and you listened, and you gave him insight to interpret the dream of the king. When Paul and Silas were behind jail cells, the church was praying, and because you listened, those jail cells opened up all by themselves. So King Jesus, we thank you for listening when your people pray. Somebody is praying right now. Somebody is praying for a son or a daughter. Somebody is praying for a mother or a father. Somebody is praying for a loved one that is incarcerated. Someone is praying for a job, finances, or a clean bill of health. But, oh God, we thank you today. Because when your people pray, we have the assurance of knowing you listen when we do. And so, God, we pray right now 
that your spirit will come and tabernacle with us. Oh God, we pray right now that anything in us that Satan attempts to use to distract us, we pray, oh God, through the power of your spirit, that you will rebuke it, that you will put it behind us, that you will give us clear sight, that you'll give us a clean heart, that you'll give us ears that we might hear and hearts that we might respond. Oh God, we need you to speak to our hearts today. We stand in need of your guidance and direction. We pray this now in the name of Jesus and all the saints of God together said amen, 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 amen. and amen. Let's give it up for this choir and their <laughs> ministering to us in song. I ask you to be in prayer with me uh, as um, I try to hide myself and let the Spirit of God speak through me. I want to ask a couple of questions. I asked them at the early service and I ask them again now. Is there a word of comfort for those who moan? We have gone through so much um, sickness and death and not two months of a new year. It has come in rapid fire order. And so I was just led to ask the question, is there a word of comfort for those who mourn? Is there a word of encouragement for those who are discouraged? Is there a word of reassurance for those who are doing their best to hold on and to hold out but feel that their grip is getting weak? Is there a word for those who are just going through the motions of worship because their dreams and hopes uh, have been dashed so many times that all they can do is go through the motions? I just wonder today, is there a word for those whose spirit is downcast? Is there a word for those who have lost hope? Isaiah, in the 50th chapter, said yes. He said that the Lord has instructed my lips. He has given me a word to sustain the weary. I'm here to say today, there is a word from the Lord. You're going through something. And what you're going through is beyond your ability, your knowledge, your experience to, 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 to come through on your own. And I'm here to say there is a word from the Lord that will sustain you. A word that will sustain the weary. And the word from God today is this. Christ in you is the peace that will sustain you. Say that with me. Christ in me is the peace that will sustain me. Amen? It's very important, Green Forest, that we know and have the assurance that Christ's peace is with us. For one, knowing that Christ's peace is with us somehow sets the tone for the day. Knowing that Christ's peace is with you sets a tone. And, and, and I have found, and I'm am, am, am realizing more and more, that how I start off my day oftentimes ends up determining and defining all of my day. That's why the first thing I do in the morning is declare, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Knowing that Christ in you is the peace that sustains will help you get through whatever you're going through. Amen? Christ in you the peace that sustains. Think with me here. Let me define uh, the word sustain. It basically means to support, to bear a heavy weight or a heavy load. These beams, they support the weight of this ceiling. Therefore, we're able to worship sustained by these beams. 
holding up that weight. I'm going somewhere and talking about somebody who can sustain us. Amen. Uh, sustain is, is that which protects. Sustain is that which supplies what you need when you need it. In the quantity that you need it. Somebody tells me that there was once a people who were in a wilderness and did not have no bread nor any water. But there was a bread from heaven that came down and sustained them. Where there was no water, that same one that sustained them with bread brought water out of a rock. I'm talking about something that sustains, something that preserves, something that, that, that prevents from falling. Peace. In the Hebrew, the word typically is used uh, 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 for peace is shalom. The, the connotation is a positive one. Therefore, when somebody says shalom to you, it doesn't mean I hope you don't get into any trouble. It's a positive connotation. It means I hope you have all the highest good coming your way. For many people, peace is the absence of trouble. I hope I've got enough gas in my car to get to my destination. I hope I don't have no trouble out of my supervisor today. For teachers, I hope those little kids don't give me any trouble. For many people, peace is the absence of trouble. But for believers, it's just the opposite. For believers, uh, peace is the presence of truth. Think about that. Peace is not just the absence of trouble, but rather peace is the presence of truth. And Jesus Christ is true. So therefore, 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 where Christ is, there is and where truth is, there is peace. I want you to see the connection. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is peace. Wherever Jesus is, peace is always present. Amen? The text for this message is found in the Gospel of John, uh, John chapter 14. Will you stand with me? John chapter 14, and uh, I want to begin at... Um, I want to begin at verse uh, 23. John 14, beginning at verse 23. Let me read it into your hearing, if I might. John 14, 23. Are you there? Yes. Jesus said, If anybody loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him and will come to him and make our home with him. Verse 26. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. Verse 27. Peace. Somebody say peace. I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Christ in you, the peace that sustains. Let me try to set this up. It is no coincidence that God had us studying the book of Colossians where the challenge has been for us to walk worthy of the Lord. It is no coincidence that our fulfillment hour uh, lessons from Ephesians uh, deals with the same concept. Walking worthy of our calling. When we look at Colossians, y'all stay with me here. There's a, there's a word here for, 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 that will sustain. 
Paul says, I am, or God is uh, uh, making known to you a great mystery, a mystery of the ages that persisted over generations. And the mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The mystery is when Christ died, shed his blood, was buried, rose again, he poured out his spirit. His spirit lives in us. Well, now, Christ is in us, and because Christ is in us, we have hope. We have a hope that is impervious, or, or that has no regard for our circumstances. We have a hope that transcends our circumstances. The hope we have in Christ gives us a confidence. Somebody say confidence. We have a confidence because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' is what? Blood and so our hope is in Christ. And when you know that you've got hope in Christ, it should affect the way you walk. It should affect the way you live. It should affect the way you talk. It should affect the way you handle uh, uh, the difficulties of life. But last week, we came back and we said that not only uh, is Christ, uh, uh, Christ in us our hope, but we, we looked at uh, Paul saying in, in Colossians chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, he says that, uh, I pray that each of, you will, each of you will be strengthened by his glorious might and power so that you will be able to endure and have patience. In other words, we have hope in Christ. That's the platform for how we walk and live in life. But God, in his great mercy, realized there's no way you and I can live in a way that is worthy of him. We can't do it on our own. Whenever I do what's right, evil is always there. So in his great mercy and grace, what God did We've got this hope. He provides power that upholds the hope. Uh, uh, God gives us the power that enables us to walk worthy. In other words, God didn't leave it to us because if he left it to us, there's no way we could live or do what he's called us to do. So now we've got hope, and that hope is supported by the power of God. That hope is sustained by the power of God like these beings hold up the ceiling. And so when you look at the hope we have in Christ, when you look at the power for that hope, hope grounded in Christ, power provided by Christ provides the peace of Christ. I'll say it again. When you got hope that is not based on you, but in Christ. And when you got the power of the one who, who created everything that exists, when you got the assurance of the power of God through Christ in you, folks, you got peace. You got peace. You got hope. And that hope doesn't disappoint because he who promises faithful. He who promises has the power to bring it into existence. Oh, I'm going here. Oh, don't miss this. When you got hope in Christ and you got the assurance that God's power is there to bring it into existence, what do you got to worry about? The formula is hope plus power equals peace. Hope plus power equals peace. Christ in you is the peace that will sustain you. Christ in you is the peace that will sustain you when you're going through financial issues. Christ in you is the peace that will keep you when everybody else has walked away from you. Christ in you is the peace that will uh, 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 sustain you when the doctor said we've done all we could do. I'm saying that there is a peace that will sustain you. When you don't have the energy to get up and move, there is a peace 
that will enable you to move because there's hope that's supported by a power that will put something in your walk and in your arm. Help me, Jesus. See, somebody needs a word. And that word of comfort is that there is peace. That word of encouragement is there is peace. Word of encouragement is that it reassurance is that there is peace. And that peace will sustain you. Amen. And that's what the disciples needed. Because here in the text, Jesus had just celebrated communion, Passover with him. Then as you know, in the 14th chapter, Jesus said to them that I am preparing to go away. I'm returning to my father. And suddenly they got upset. They were worried. They were confused. Where are you going? Can't we go? No, you can't go with me right now. I'm going to prepare a place. Now, this is problematic. Watch this. Why would they be concerned? Why would they be worried? Why would their hearts be heavy in hearing that Jesus was about to leave? Here's the reason. For the three years they were with him, he was their peace. For the three years he was with them, he was their provider. They saw him convert water into wine. They saw him restore sight to the blind. Uh, when, when Peter's mother was sick, he went, touched her, and healed her. They saw Jesus bringing peace on a stormy sea one night. They saw Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Their hopes were in Christ. Their comfort was in Christ. Their confidence was in Christ. And all of a sudden, Christ is going to leave? When our jobs go away, we're worried. When our health begins to deteriorate, and fail. What are we going to do? The finances are all jacked up. What are we going to do? When the husband who's the primary breadwinner decides he's going to walk out and do something else. What are we going to do? They need it like we need a word that will sustain them as they go through. Now, if anybody doesn't need a sustaining word, then you need to write a book and let us know how you do it. And so that's the backdrop of this conversation, or some would call it a discourse. And so the first thing we see is that the peace that sustains comes through Christ Jesus. Isaiah 9 says that Jesus is uh, our peace. Isaiah says that uh, for unto us a, 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 a son is given. Uh, unto us a child has been born. A man green for us. And, and he's going to be known by various names. Some will know him in their journey as a wonderful counselor. When I walk through the garden and I need to talk to somebody, the, the counselor, Jesus, is there. Somebody knows him as a mighty God that is able to do abundantly more than we can ask, think, or imagine. Somebody said he's the everlasting father. He's going to always be there, but he is also known as the prince Jesus is the prince of peace. Jesus came into the world to make peace possible. Before he came, we were separated. We were enemies with God. We were on our way to hell. But Jesus came. He gave his life. He bridged the gap so we might have. He is peace. So peace comes through him. Then, to look at what he says to them. He says, first of all, guys, peace I leave with you. You see that in the text? Is that what he says? He says, peace I leave with you. What does this mean? It means, okay, yes, I'm leaving you. 
Yes, I know that uh, I have comforted you. Yes, I know you have looked to me to provide everything that you need. And yes, I understand that because I've been with you and because I've comfort comforted you, because I provided everything that you needed, you have a, a reason to, to be concerned. But guys, listen, I'm leaving you, but I'm leaving my peace behind. I'm leaving you, but you still have peace. Amen? The peace is not going anywhere. He says, peace I leave with you. I'm not taking it with me. I'm not leaving you by yourself. Secondly, then he goes from that and he says, my peace. You see that? My peace I give to you. And what Jesus is saying here, first of all, is that he was giving to them what belonged to him. Uh, it's sort of like what a parent often does um, in life, and that is to uh, make a will. How many of you guys have a will? Pray for me. Pam and I have been talking about it. <laughs> We've not done it. I'm being transparent. A good friend of mine in California, his wife passed. We went out there before my brother passed. Uh, I said, well, Lyman, do you have the will and everything? He said, man. Now, he's a director of missions. He directs the work of about, seven, I guess, about 65 churches in the San Francisco Bay Area, associational missionary. He says, Dennis, I've been standing before churches and saying, you guys need to have a will. And he said, I never thought that I would be caught without having a will. Folks, that's a word to us. We need to take care of business. And I know as black folk, you know, we don't like to even talk about that. But it really leaves a lot of hardship on families left behind. But anyway, it's, it's the same idea. When Jesus says, my peace I give to you, what Jesus is saying is, is that uh, um, I am leaving you an inheritance. This peace belongs to me. Often when a parent dies, uh, they leave uh, houses, they leave cars, they leave jewelry, they leave bank accounts, they leave debts. <laughs> and material things. But Jesus didn't have any silver or gold to leave behind. Jesus didn't have any real estate property. For he said, foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus didn't have any material stuff. But what he had, what he gave, is more valuable than material possessions. What he left was his Peace. And his peace is a peace that sustains. His peace is a peace that defies region, uh, re, uh, 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 reason or logic. His peace is able to bring us through the impossible. His peace surpasses all understanding. There are a lot of wealthy people who possess a lot of material stuff. But they ain't got no peace. And he's saying, gentlemen, I'm giving you my peace. It was something that belonged to him, and he is willing it to them. And my friends, you and I have the peace of Christ in us. His spirit in us brings his peace. But then there's one other thing that he means when he says, my peace I give you. It's the same peace. Somebody say the same peace. That sustained Jesus. We're talking about Christ in you. It's a peace that helps you get through. That helps you walk in a way uh, uh, that, that is worthy of the Lord. That helps you to walk in a way that is pleasing in God's sight. To walk in a way where you're not getting angry and uh, cursing people out and, and, and all of those negative emotions and attitudes. Uh, a peace that allows you to, to live out your calling. 
What are you saying? The same peace that sustained me. The same peace that came over me when I was in the wilderness, tempted by Satan. That same peace that sustained me when folks were acting crazy towards me, when people were talking about me, when people were ridiculing me, when people were plotting schemes against me, when people were talking about me. Jesus didn't go off. He didn't take off his wig or his earrings. He didn't roll up his sleeves. He was at peace. It's the same peace that Jesus had when he stood before Pilate. Jesus is cool. He's calm. He's collected. He's in control of the situation. He was so peaceful. You know, if you want to get your enemy mad, if you want to get your haters upset, you just be at peace and watch how they start getting loud. They start yelling. They start acting in a rage. Have you, am I the only one? See, and that's what happened. Jesus is at peace. Pilate got so mad that Pilate said, don't you know who I am? Don't you know that I have the authority to set you free or to crucify you? Hold up now. Jesus uh, uh, knew that his time had come. Jesus knew the hour was near, and yet he's talking about giving peace to his disciples. He knows he's about to be nailed to a cross. He knows he's about to become sin and separated uh, from the Father in that instant, and yet he's got peace. He knew who he was. He knew whose he was. He looks at Pilate and says, Sir, you have no authority over me uh, uh, unless it comes down from on high. And if God hadn't said a word about it to me. In other words, he had a peace in the face of hatred. He had peace in the face of, 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 a, of a disaster. He walked in a way that called people say, what manner of man is this? He hung on the cross. And rather than begging and pleading and making threats, he looked down, Father, forgive them. Never said a mumbling word. His peace was so powerful and profound that the soldiers that were there, uh, they felt convicted because they saw something in this man. And what they saw was a peace. And that's the same peace, help me, Jesus, that is in us. That's the same peace he's leaving for us. That's what he wants us to have, his peace, so we can live out our calling. It's hard, if not impossible, to minister to somebody when your life is not characterized by peace. That's why it says, blessed are the peace makers. Over in Second Chronicle, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 1, he says, let us comfort others with the comfort we have received of the Holy Spirit. Living out our calling, we ought to be bringing comfort to those who need comfort. But if there's not a peace in our lives, am I right? It's going to be hard to step up and stand in the gap and be seen as a peacemaker. So this peace uh, is a peace uh, that uh, comes from his nature, his character, the Prince of Peace. It's a peace that, that he's given to us as an inheritance. It's a peace that, that he himself enjoyed. So first of all, this, this peace comes through our, uh, it comes through Christ. The second thing we, we see here and need to understand is that this peace that sustains comes through faith in Christ. If there is no faith, there can be no peace. Simon said, mercy and grace 
walk hand in hand together, or as peace and righteousness kiss. Get that. Where there is righteousness, there is peace. If there's no righteousness, ain't no peace. In one of the fulfillment hour classes this morning, one of the brothers was talking about his job and how on his job, his team of technical supporters are required to fudge the numbers. Their supervisors expect them to show that they have done more than they have. And I said, oh, sounds like Atlanta Public Schools to me. And he went on to say, now there's a threat there. And the threat is, if you don't comply, it might cost you your job. So what you gonna do? Righteousness and peace kiss. You can have a job by fudging numbers, by being dishonest, by not having integrity. You can keep your job. You might even get promoted. But there will be no peace. On the other hand, when you stand for righteousness, when you stand for justice, when you're willing to pay the price, you may lose your job. You may be ridiculed. You may be criticized. You may be rejected. But in the midst of the rejection, in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of your lost job, God is able to sustain you with his peace. So don't worry about losing material things. Don't worry about losing your job just because somebody said you got to do this. You stand for what's right and watch God work through your situation. Amen? That's a peace. That's why our forefathers could take a stand. That's why they marched. That's why they marched in Selma and, and Vicksburg and Mississippi and Jackson. That's why. They were willing to be beaten. That's why they were willing to be jailed. That's why. Because what they were doing was right. And it was just in the sight of God. Amen. 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 So I'm just saying, the peace that will bring you through is, a, is peace through faith in Jesus Christ. John 14, Jesus said, those who love me are those who obey me. And if you're going to obey God, you got to trust God. You got you to take what God says in his word, and you got to apply it. But know what he says. John 14, and I think verse 21. Look at this. Oh, my, this is good stuff. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, verse 21, he is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be what? Are y'all looking at this? Verse 21. Will be loved by the Father. And I will love him. And I will show myself to him. What I'm trying to say is that we've got to have faith and act in faith. And when we do, we experience the peace of God. Jesus shows himself when we are obedient. He shows himself by sustaining us with his peace. So the peace that sustains, the peace that comes through faith in Christ. Two more things and we'll be done. The third thing here is that the peace of Christ that sustains comes through the presence of God. Think with me. If you're going to access the peace of God, you've got to walk in the presence of God. I can walk outside on a rainy day with an umbrella. As long as I've got the umbrella over my head, 
I am walking in a type of a shelter. Amen. A type of a shelter. But though there is an umbrella available, if I choose to neglect the umbrella and go out there on my own, then I am out from under the protection. Does that make sense? Yes. And so, Jesus said in John 15, If any man remain in me, I will remain in him. And when he is in us, the peace that is in him is in us. So as I walk in his presence, I'm walking in the assurance of his peace that will sustain me. Amen. Well, the question becomes, I'm almost there, how do I stay in God's presence? Paul says, those of you who've been going with us through Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, since you've been raised with Christ, set your minds in your hearts, on things above. Because your life is now hidden in Christ. We seek his face. We seek his will through studying his word, through fulfillment hour, through our discipleship classes. We seek his will by spending time in prayer. We seek his will by using the spiritual gifts that we have in service to him. It's called working out your salvation. There are many people that have become discouraged. There are many people that have lost hope. There are those in this body that, that don't have the energy and so they're on the sideline. They're not involved. They're exactly where Satan wants them to be. Amen? But there are times, oh, praise Jesus, where you may not feel like coming to church. There are times when you say, I've got too many things on my plate. I can't serve in the church. Folks, the bells and the whistles need to be going off in your life. That's a warning. Amen. Because we were created to be connected to the body of Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. The peace of Christ that sustains you comes through the presence of God. And then finally, somebody say finally. The peace that will sustain you, thank God, it's an everlasting peace. The peace that will sustain you does not have any time limits on it. The peace that will sustain you is not subject to being changed, not subject to being destroyed. The psalmist said, even though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you, listen to God, will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace with you be removed, says the Lord. God's sustaining peace never runs out. It is everlasting. Isaiah 46, 4, listen to what he says. Even to your old age and gray Hairs. In other words, even as you age and get old, I am still he. I am he that will sustain you. I made you. I will carry you. I will sustain you. I will rescue you. David says, I was once young and now I'm old. I've seen a lot of things in the span of my years. But never have I seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bad. Why? Because God's peace, God's provision, God's protection, God's power is an everlasting power. Amen. I've got to read you 
Just one more verse. Let me read you from Psalm 91. This thing, every time I read it, it blesses my heart. We're talking about uh, the sustaining peace of God. The psalmist right? He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will, says the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And because I trust in God, because God's peace is an everlasting peace, he says that, that you will not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. You will not even fear the pestilence that stalks the darkness. You won't have no fear of the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come anywhere close to you, for he will command his angels concerning all concerning you to guard you in all your ways. I'm talking about a peace that is everlasting. These angels will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Hallelujah. You will walk upon the lion in the cobra. You will trample the great lion in the serpent. I hear Daniel said, I know you're right about it. When I was in the lion's den, the lion was as gentle as a kitten. And then he goes on and said, because he loves me, the Lord will rescue me. The Lord will protect me. When I call upon him, the Lord will answer me. I will be with him. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us uh, uh, in a time of trouble. I'm trying to say that there is a peace that is everlasting peace. There is a peace that will sustain you through whatever you go through. Amen. And that peace is in Jesus. He sustains us through the storms of life. He sustains us uh, through sickness and death. Uh, he sustains us. He keeps us. David uh, understood it. David says uh, uh, the peace is a perfect peace. He says because Christ is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. He's the one that provides my peace. I shall not want. He is such a sustainer of peace that, that he's making me lie down in green valleys. He brings me beside the still waters where he's able to restore my soul. The God, my shepherd, is such a perfect peace that it, he leads me to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though my haters come up against me, this God of peace, he will prepare for me a table in the presence of my enemy. He will cause my cup of blessings to overflow. We're talking about a peace that will carry you, a peace that will sustain you, a peace that will uphold you. Then David went on and he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, his peace is right there with me because in his peace is his presence. And where his presence is, there is his peace. And because he is uh, my peace, surely, surely, without a doubt, no question about it, surely, goodness and his mercy, despite my failures, despite my ineptness, surely, his goodness, his mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'm telling you, when you know the goodness of God, when you know the mercy of God is right there with you every step of the way, you can have perfect peace. And he says, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever what what that means what that means is that we got victory what that means is that we know how the story ends and when you know how the
the story is that gives you a sense of peace when you know that you're on a winning team you can walk with confidence you can walk with determination you can walk with boldness because surely so is there a word is there a word for those who've grown weary? I hear them say, come unto me, all you who labor, and I will give you rest. Is there a word for those who have lost hope? I hear them saying to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I brought you down into this valley of dead dry bones. I need to ask you a question, Ezekiel. These dead, dry bones have come to the conclusion there is no hope for their future. There is no reason to press on. There's no reason to get up and get back involved. Can these dead bones live again? Ezekiel said, Lord, I don't know. God said, well, I tell you what to do. You let these dead, dry bones know that there is a word that will sustain the weary. You let these dead, dry bones know there is a word that will restore hope. You let these dead, dry bones know that there is a word that can resurrect the, the, the spirits of, of my people. So therefore, you speak the word. Is there a word? Speak the word. The word can heal. The word can restore. The word can renew. Ezekiel prophesied. He spoke the word of God. And though that valley was scattered with bones, a bone over here, a bone over there, separated, dead and dry, when he began to speak the word, the word that can sustain a, a Peace, the word that can renew all of a sudden. The brother said, I heard a sound. There was a, a, a tinkling sound. And I looked up and on their own, these dead dry bones that were separated, these dead dry bones, that dreams had been shattered, that hopes had been dashed that had given up on the possibility of a bright future. All of a sudden, these dead dry bones began to come back again. And then he said, and then I looked and I saw the, the ligaments. I saw the tendons. I saw the flesh coming back on these bones. There was an ankle bone connected to the knee bone. There was a knee bone connected to the hip bone. There was a hip bone connected to the back bone. There was a back bone connected to the neck bone, meaning that there were black, there were white, there were young, there were old, there were rich, there were poor. But when the word went out, all of a sudden, that hopelessness had been replaced with hope because Ezekiel said, I looked up. In those once dead dry bones that represented the house of Israel, that represented God's people who lost hope. When that word went out, all of a sudden, they stood up like a mighty arm. Their hope had been renewed. Their confidence had been restored. And now they were ready to be in the Lord's army. Now they were ready to fight for the Lord. Is there a word? Is there a word? Yes, there is a word. And that word is Christ in you is a peace that will sustain you. Amen. How many have received that? We started out the first Sunday in, in January, and we said, God has already done everything he needed to do. He's removed all the stumbling blocks. The only stumbling block remains is us. Christ is everything we need. It's already there. In you, you have hope. 
in you, Christ is hope. In you, he brings his power. In you, he gives peace. It's available, but it has to be received. The psalmist says, I lay down, I sleep, and I wake up. What he was saying is, I can go to sleep at night, not concerned about what's going on around me, because the peace of the Lord will sustain me. If you're here, we want to invite you to come and experience being safe, safe, safe in the arms of the Lord. That's what his peace does. It makes you safe in his arms. If you've never accepted him as Lord and Savior, he you lets me his rest peace. in the meadow's grass. Receive his peace, perfect peace, sustain me. Keep you, hold you, stream. protect you, supply everything you need. Here is but you gotta receive him. My faith and he said, Come unto me, and I'll give you my peace. Will you come? If you've never been baptized, here's your opportunity. Second invitation. If you're not, uh, go ahead and roll it. If you're not a member of a church, we invite you to come and unite with us here at Green Forest. Go ahead and sing your song, sweetheart. There's a peace. We're safe in his arms. Amen. Baptism. If you're here, will you come? If you're not a member of the church, we invite you to come and unite. Connect right here with us. Because the Lord is my shepherd. Well, he's a great shepherd too. I have everything I need. Everything. Everything. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass. Resting in the meadow. It's available. And he leads me beside the quiet street. Oh, bless you, bless you. Come on down. He restores my failing care. Doesn't matter what you've been, he where you've been. Do He'll restore what you. Honor Receive him. the most. That's safe. why I'm saved. Safe. That's There's why safe, I'm saved. A safe place. That's why I'm saved. Come on. Come to the Lord Jesus. He died that you might have peace. His arms. That you might have safety in his arms. Trust him. Trust him. Will you come? Let's trust him. Because the Lord is my shepherd. Who can say the Lord is my shepherd? I have everything I need. I got peace. Joy. He lets me rest in the peace. meadow's grass. And Only Jesus can do that for you. Only Jesus can do it. The, quiet the world can't do it for you. You got to trust him. He them. restores my failing head. Dry bones live he again. He helps me to do what Woo, honors him the he most. And that's why I'm saved. That's, that's why, why I'm saved. That's why, why I'm saved. I'm saved. Woo, Jesus. Sing it, just sing it, and just sing it. Come on, the storms, when the storms, no matter what kind of storm, the they're storms of life, when they're raging, I can stand. The Will you trust them? Will you trust them? Say yes. When they roar, I'm so glad that he shall hide me. I'm safe. Will there be another? Come on, Dad. Trust, trust him. Come on, trust him. Come on, trust him. Just put him to the test and see. Put him to the test. He won't let you down. Because the Lord is my shepherd.
The word will speak a word that will give hope to people. The word he put in my spirit, speak a word that will speak to the pain of my people. Speak a word that will encourage the weary. The word has been spoken. Christ in you is a peace that will sustain. And we are safe. And I just pray you go home with that thought. Doesn't matter what happens this week. Don't matter what Satan throws at you. His peace surpasses. It transcends all that stuff. And because we have a peace that's sustained, we can walk in a manner that's worthy of our calling. Amen. 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 We want to welcome to Green Forest. First, we have a returning member, Monica Freeman. She's coming back based on Christian experience. Monica, God bless you, and we welcome you back. Amen. And then uh, her daughter, Ryan Freeman. Hello, Ryan. How are you, sweet, sweet? Give me a hug. I'm a hugging pastor. She's coming as a candidate for baptism. Amen. Amen. And then we also have Candace Phillips, who's coming as a candidate for baptism. God bless you, dear. Amen. Amen. What do we have here? Okay. Okay, these have come for prayer. Amen. And so you've been prayed for. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. And we thank God for you. And we pledge, we pledge, we will do everything we can to really embrace you, encourage you, help you to grow. That's what we'll do. But this works both ways. 
okay, you've got to show yourself willing to become all that Christ wants you to be. Amen. God bless you and thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Green Forest. To all of our guests and visitors today, would you just hold your hand up so we can recognize you as we prepare to leave? Well, God bless you. I'll just see you back there. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. To each of you, we thank you for being with us in our prayers that something has been said or done that just kind of conveys the love of Christ and that will sustain you in the week to come. And we invite you to come on back again. Amen. As you guys go, my prayer for you this week, here it is. My prayer is that God will cause his face to shine upon you and that God will cause your spirit to look into the hills from whence cometh your help, and that you'll walk in the sustaining peace of God. Amen. Amen. Let's reach out and uh, hold, uh, take each other's hands as we prepare to be dismissed. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. him who keeps us safe in his arms, who is able to keep us from falling, is able to present us spotless before his glorious presence, and do so with great, great joy. Now unto God, our only Savior and Lord, to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, be all power, all dominion, all majesty, all praise, now and henceforth forevermore. We lift our voices as we declare.